Hey everyone, today we're covering a crucial modeling workflow for adding in small details to your sub-D car models. This is part of a series where I'm covering car modeling from start to finish. Today's video focuses specifically on how to model in fine details like door handles and fuel caps without ruining the form and edge flow of your sub-D models. This series is targeted for beginner to advanced skill level in 3D modeling, and my 2022.4 will be used for this tutorial, but the workflows can be applied to any 3D software as well as any version of Maya. So with that, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Maya and you can see the iterations and progress that we've been making over the past few videos in this series. We are gonna be finalizing the details by adding in door handles and fuel caps to our model. And this workflow can be applied really to any type of 3D model. Now, if you haven't, I'd recommend taking a look at this video that I've posted in the past before, which is Hard surface modeling, how to fix bad surfaces. This will give you a really good in-depth look on how to apply this to other models and just keeps it at this high level workflow. Now, I'm gonna quickly recap and show you this workflow applied to a simple sphere. Now, here we have a sphere with a cylindrical extrusion. Now, if you look at this at a you know pretty far distance, it holds up pretty well. And to be honest, will be fine for most needs. But for something like a car vehicle where we're gonna be really, really getting in close here, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have really consistent body lines, that we don't have disruptions in the surface detail, and the reflections hold up really, really well, right? Because if I'm doing 4K renders, you need to make sure things look as crisp as humanly possible, right? And that's where this method is going to help you for these high detailed workflows. Keep in mind, this is for high poly sub D models, but you can take this detail and of course bake it down to a lower poly model. So back to the sphere here, you can see that we have this extrusion. And if we zoom in and really get in close here, you can start to see that the shape falls apart a bit as you're orbiting around and taking a look at it in, uh, with a really fine tooth comb, all right? Now, the method here is instead of doing an extrusion at this base mesh, where again, you can kind of see that we have 16 edges here, you're first going to want to not do the extrusion and subdivide the mesh. So this is as if you have this form done and you're ready to add in fine detail. This is just a smooth version of the sphere without the extrusion. So if you go back, or I go back and remove the divisions, you can see that I have these 16 sides. So then now I can add in one division. And then from this point here, I can do the same workflow and do the extrusion. And you can see how this looks now. And it holds up much better we have more geometry. Sub D's, subdivision surfaces really, really like this. It doesn't like when you take detail like this and try to push it far beyond what it can do, right? There's just not enough edges here for it to hold and retain the overall surface. And then if I check this in smooth preview, you can see how crisp and clean this looks. The highlight here, it's looking really good and it doesn't break apart or fall apart and I can rotate around at pretty much any angle and it really looks good. Now, for the final test here, I can duplicate these spheres, put them next to each other and then apply a subdivision to them. In this case, this low poly or lower poly mesh is going to get two subdivisions. So if I hold shift right click, apply a smooth, apply two divisions, and this is what it's gonna look like. This model here that's already been subdivided can only be subdivided once, or I should say only needs to be subdivided once. And again, it holds up really, really well. And then now you can start to see how this is pretty apparent with the artifacting and issues here on this lower poly mesh that's been subdivided versus this mid subdivision. And then I add in the detail after I subdivide once and then subdivide again. The overall division and distribution of edges is the same. The detail is the same. There is minimal differences in poly count. It is actually a little bit less here for this model, 3,800 tries. 
and this one's at 4,600. So we're even saving some poly count here. But that really doesn't matter for what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get this to look as good as possible. This workflow is, when I learned about this, was incredibly groundbreaking to me because it told me like, oh my God, I can come here, model my form, subdivide it, and then subdivide it again afterwards, right? It's kind of like that ZBrush workflow as you're, you know, iteratively and progressively subdividing and adding in detail. You're just applying it to the hard surface workflow. And this makes sure that you keep this high poly, high detailed, crisp looking geometry. And this is huge, you guys. So this is what I'm doing here, and I'll show you how to apply this to the vehicle. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide all of these parts that I don't need. And here we are with this. Now, this is the final version, so I'm actually gonna hide this, get rid of the door handle and everything, and bring back my original version. Now, keep in mind, when you are ready to do this, you want to make sure to control D, as in dog, and duplicate this and throw this in your whip folder so you have a backup of it. This is a destructive workflow, meaning once you apply the subdivisions and make edits that you can't go back to that lower poly, but you can go back and forth as needed, all right? So just keep that in mind. So once I'm happy here, I can go in and of course add in some extra detail to these door lines. So I added in an extra subdivision here that's gonna hold this and give this kind of this crisper look. And if you wanted to, depending on how thick you want this gap, you can subdivide or smooth preview with three on the keyboard, press W for move and hold control, middle mouse and drag. And you can start to move this out a little bit just to get a little bit more precision and control. So this is one of those final things that I do to the model to give that detail and kind of refine those door gaps. But I'm gonna leave these as is, and I'm happy with how this looks. So then I'm gonna go ahead now and hold shift right click and smooth. So I have divisions one, and I'm gonna keep this at one subdivision. Now with this, I can jump to my side view, go into X-ray mode, and now I can start to add in this detail here. You can see that I have this fuel cap, and if I check our reference here, we got this mood board, it's going to be on the driver's side, or excuse me, on the passenger side, I'm adding it on the driver's side, and then I'm just going to mirror it over, so it's no big deal, all right? And then you can see the door handle geometry here. So with that, I can start cutting in this detail. Now, without this, I don't have enough geometry. And this is where this issue lies, that if I just go through and quickly cut in this without an, any edge flow, and I just cut in, it may look okay, but we don't have enough geometry. So I cut in, I cut in. And if you wanted to then bevel this and extrude this, So you can see that it doesn't look good and it doesn't even give us enough geometry to match the form of this fuel cap. So you get something like this and it may look okay, but things are a little bit too round. It's not square enough and it's just not enough geometry. And then you have to run into issues where, okay, well then I can start pinching these and you start to break these line, these edges these main edges that were used to refine this form, and it just doesn't look good. You start to ruin the underlying form of your mesh, and even worse, like you'd probably have to go in and add in edges, which you don't wanna do at this point since you finalized the form. So you can get away with this if you add in manually some edges, but instead, we're just going to subdivide it and add it to the end. All right, so I just jumped back here and I will add in that subdivision. Now, you can, of course, just extract the surfaces that you need, which is going to be this rear quarter panel here, which is actually combined with the rest of the vehicle. So I will extract this and delete history, and that way I don't need to subdivide these meshes unless I absolutely need to. So 
with that, I will subdivide these. And then now I have enough geometry to go in and start cutting in some detail. And I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that we have that, I was able to cut in the detail and I have enough geometry that it holds this form a lot better than what we had previously. So what I can do is grab these edges that I cut in and I'm actually gonna lower the specularity on this material because it does look like it's a little bit hard to see. So I'm gonna darken it a bit and drop the specularity. Okay, great. So with this, I select these edges and I bevel these edges and I can use something like this, just like we did the paneling, you know, you can set this fraction off, use something like, you know, 0.25. We don't want it to bump into any other edges, so that's fine. And set this to two segments and grab this edge here, bevel again. And this time I'll use maybe 0.15 or not fraction. Remember, turn off fraction and use offset point one this is going to be a little bit tighter always make sure to double check and take a look at your reference so since this is on the passenger side we can take a look here and see what this looks like so you can see how uh, that looks here and i can add this lip later but for now i'm just going to do the extrusion and i have this edge here and i can extrude move in about 0.5 Oh, excuse me, minus 0.5. And I'm going to add in one division, like so, or two divisions. So it gives me an extra edge here. Then with this face still selected, I'm going to hold sh uh, shift right click and extract faces. And there you go. So now this paneling is holding up really, really well. And you can see we don't get any artifacts, the reflections are gonna be consistent, and it looks clean, very, very clean. And this is exactly what we want. I can apply the same workflow to this door handle. And the one thing that I wanted to bring up is based on part nine, I had to prepare the geometry a little bit more where I took this, if I set this division back to zero, and what I did was added in an extra edge just so I had enough to cut in when it subdivided. Because without having this extra edge, it didn't give me enough that I had to kind of move too many edges. So this is gonna give us exactly what we need. I'm making sure that I have essentially these sets of faces here. One, two, three. This is gonna give me this nice edge here for my inset here and same thing on the other side. So instead of having just one edge here, which was primarily these two faces, I have three. And remember when you subdivide, it splits it into four faces. So I'll go ahead and hide that. And I can take this now, reapply that division of one, and I can now cut in this detail. So. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so here's what I got. So I went through and cut in that detail and we can see how this starts to look. Now, instead of taking this surface data and doing an offset and then extrude, where I'd have to do a lot of manual manipulation to get this to look right, Instead, I can grab a sphere and use that instead. This, because if you look at reference here, it's a nice curve. And if you zoom in here, it's nice and curvy uh, inside. So it's kind of like this half cylindrical look. So instead now, what I did was grab this sphere, a normal sphere, not a subdivided cube. And let me put this in position. And I will just use maybe 16 or so. And then I can clean that up as needed. Rotate 90 degrees. 
and I think 16 is actually a lot. I think I ended up using like eight or something. I can scale this up and you can start to see, you kind of get this half shape here. And what you can simply do is take this middle edge, bevel it, and I'll probably end up reducing the fraction here a bit and just move this. So you get something like this. And from this point, I can take this, put this here, and I'm not gonna Boolean, that'll be too messy, but I can use this form and use the inside of this piece of geometry. For example, I have this already done here where I have this part here with my whip. Let me just grab this and let me duplicate and unparent these. I have this geometry. And what I ended up doing was taking this sphere, this capsule shape now, and scaling it, rotating it, and putting it in position, and ended up with this shape here, just like this, right? So this gives me what I want, or what I need, and I can grab this sphere and make sure that these edges are aligned with the cut in geometry that I added. So I can move these, make sure that's clean. And I can grab these edges here, these edges inverts, move these in, kind of space these out a little bit and cut in this. So I'm preparing this geometry so I can add it to the car. And what I wanna do now is select these faces and delete it. So I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about right here. So hopefully if you're kind of sticking through this, you'll see exactly what I'm gonna do and it's gonna save you a lot of work down the road. And I had the wrong edges or faces deleted. I wanted to make sure to evenly do that right down the center. So here we go. So I wanna make sure you caught that, delete these faces. Now, the thing is you wanna make sure not to move these edges and snap them here because that's going to mess up the surface of our geometry instead we're going to use that technique that i used before that i use all the time which is shrink wrapping or conforming this surface on uh, another surface but how do i do that well i can take this edge here and i can do a quick fill hole shift right click fill hole so now we have this face here and what I can do is select the door handle like so and set this to live surface so this is going to make it live so we can essentially draw on it but we're not going to draw we're going to shrink wrap and conform if I turn on edged faces or wireframe unshaded you can see it turns green so then I can select the face here go to mesh and use conform. Now, if you do conform by default, it may end up looking okay, but I ended up having to change a setting. And if you use it by default, well, that's why, because I had the other setting, it's going to use along normal and it's going to look bad if you do it with along normal. So undo that, change it to closest point, apply, and there you go. It gives you this nice looking shrinked wrapped conformed surface and it's going to match up perfectly so i can close this and if you want to you can of course adjust this while it's live or snap it to these vertices points to make sure everything is nice and even so that's going to make sure everything's good and what i can do now is remove the live surface grab this half capsule delete this face, select all these faces, shift right click face normals, reverse normals. There. So now we have this inside piece of geometry that's going to look really good. And I'm not going to have to manually cut it in. I am going to remove these triangles here. That's why I like using factors of four. So I can just delete that. And we have something nice and clean. And then I can go back to here and I can delete these faces and combine these. Okay. 
So we have all of this ready to go. And I'm just going to snap these into position. And since these were conformed, it's not going to alter the surface that we have. So I'm going to snap this to the surface of the uh, vehicle since I cut these a little bit more precisely. So let me do that. All right, and I'm just off by one. So I can edge slide these with control shift middle mouse drag. You can see that I need one more edge here. So I'll use multi cut, but I will use edge flow and control middle mouse click. Boom, look at that. Looks really good, fits in nice and even. And snap this last vert, and there we go. And I'm snapping, by the way, with W and V for vertex snapping. Sorry if I forgot to mention that. But here we are, and everything's looking good. You can clean up these with just kind of some edge sliding, space these out as needed. But I think things are looking really good, and I can you know make any adjustments later. All right, so now that I have that, I can select these and combine. And I do want to make sure I can delete history. And I need to make sure that I have the right material uh, applied to these. You can see I have this Fong 1 material. All right, there we go. And isolate, Control 1, 3 preview. And select all your vertices in vertex mode. Shift right click, merge vertices, merge vertices. There you go. And then now things are looking really nice and we just need to add in our holding edges. So we can do that by selecting this edge, doing a bevel, but I want chamfer off. And there we go. Now it depends on how crisp this line is. You can see that it's catching quite a bit of highlights here. You can see that in a lot of different uh, renders. It's actually pretty soft relative to uh, a lot of things. So it's not going to be a super sharp cut like this. But we have these edges in here where I can you know, adjust as needed and kind of edge slide these in. Or I might not even need this inner piece here. And we get something that looks a little bit uh, easier on the eyes there. Or I can do it the other way where I remove this edge. So it just kind of depends. But that's why that beveling is nice. But I might keep that uh, outside bevel and just adjust as needed. But yeah, there we go. So we've now added in this door handle. And I have uh, this geometry here for the door handle that I created. And here it is. And it's just extruded or duplicated off of these. But I just wanted to, you know, focus on just the door handle extrusion and the fuel cap. And then, of course, I can mirror this over to the other side uh, or really just flip negative X. We, sh we should good to go. There you go. It shows up on the passenger side without any issues. All right. And we have this piece here. Delete that. And I can select the original door handle pieces. Control D, negative one. Of course, group that, then scale negative one, and there we are. So things are really starting to come together. So keep in mind, it's, I can't be understated. This workflow is so nice because it you know, doesn't mess up all that time that you spent on form, topology, and edge flow, and then you can add that. And let's say I come back here and I'm like, oh crap, I messed something up. You know, I can just take this piece of geometry and you know duplicate face and I can always reattach that later so for example if I'm like oh crap I messed up and I need to go back to the original low poly uh, that that we had I can duplicate that that I had here control D P you know change whatever I want I'm like oh I don't like the door gaps I change these I move these on the normal, blah, 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 do whatever that I want to do. Subdivide these. I can just select these and reattach it. So it's not like you're, you know, losing a lot of work. Uh, but just keep in mind, if I were to select the other 
geometry here. And there we go. So you can see now I have this geometry and I can attach it to this. That I just cut out a hole and I can keep this. So just make sure to keep that and duplicate it. Um, and you won't have to redo a lot of that work. Okay, so just in case like you're like, oh, I needed to make some adjustments, but I don't want to redo this entire process. You can uh, keep that. Uh, and one last thing is that once you're done and ready to render, you would just select the geometry that you subdivided once, like so, and delete history. And you can smooth this one time. And you get something that looks like that. And the rest of the geometry can be subdivided twice. Here. And there you go. And so now you can see everything still matches up because I subdivided once here, added in some geometry, and then subdivided once again. All right. And everything lines up. All your edge flows, everything are going to look super crisp and super clean. And if I wanted to, let's say I got in super, super close here, you know, I would reserve that for a third iteration where I would grab these pieces and subdivide it again. That's it, everybody. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope this workflow aids you in uh, all of your modeling. If you got any questions, let me know. If not, I will see you in the final video and we will be wrapping up the series. And then I can put up this model to download for anybody interested. All right, you guys. Talk to you then. Bye.